Music and entertainment are critical in everyone's well-being. It can actually change your mood, and that's what we're looking for, is that opportunity to embrace that. Noteworthy is a talk show where I get to have conversations with some of my favorite people. I get to find out what drives them and what is their passion. These are their noteworthy stories. Hello, hello, and welcome again. This is Maria Marcano, the Burnout Repair Coach. As you probably know by now, in this segment, we discuss all things to prevent, reverse, and repair the physical, mental, and oftentimes emotional damage from career burnout. And the idea is that this space is for you to be able to achieve the success that you want without breaking your body or your relationships and the process. Burnout is becoming way too common this day, these days, and actually many of us are not even aware that this is happening. So take the information that we're going to share today and use it so you can, if you're feeling burnout, reverse it. And if you are afraid you might end up there, that you can stop it in the tracks. What information is that? Well, today we're gonna to talk about ton, 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 the to-do list right? Like, why did I make that sound? It's because it's so daunting. It's so scary for many of us. And it really doesn't have to be, but it is my experience from coaching these professionals, high achievers, and in general, um, very smart people, that their to-do list is a source of stress. It's like a never-ending thing. It's like this idea that the day is never long enough for you to accomplish all that you have to accomplish. As a matter of fact, it seems like the to-do list, instead of shrinking, gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it's exhausting and definitely overwhelming. And that are those are the things that are going to lead you to burnout. So we want to address this immediately and know that this is doesn't have to be this way. But the truth is that I think that almost everybody is in that boat, in that boat of like, oh my God, my to-do list never gets done. But to-do lists get kind of a bad rap for that reason. You kind of hate your to-do list at this point. You don't, you don't have a friendly relationship with it. In this segment, we're going to talk about ways that you can actually become a friend of your to-do list so it feels like a healthy to-do list. It's a uh, to-do list that is free of overwhelm. Would you like that? Okay, let's start with making friends with it because it's becoming so daunting, so scary, so big, so stressful that even when you say to-do list, it has a ne negative connotation to it. And there's a problem when we label things as bad, as negative, as stressful, because every time your mind goes there, you're gonna experience those uh, sensations, those feelings, and those emotions. So if you are up until now a, kind, a person that has um, identified or labeled your to-do list as the enemy, as something overwhelming, as some uh, source of stress, we need to rewire that belief so when you think about your to-do list, you don't immediately go into stress. So let's think about ways that you can rewire that idea by 
connecting to the benefits of a to-do list. There's many of them. For some reason, you started it, right? At one point, you thought this was good, or maybe you were taught that this was good. So we know that the to-do list is not the evil. It's just what we had done with it. So the benefits of a to-do list are many. One of the most popular ones is that it creates what I call headspace because it gives you the opportunity to take things that you're thinking of, ideas or plans, and to write them down. And when you free headspace, when you create that opportunity is when you are able to use that mental energy for decision making or for creative thinking or for problem solving. And as a successful professional, I know you need that. So yes, the to-do list helps you to create that headspace. Another one is it helps you with time management. How does it uh, help you with time management? Because as you look at these things that were in your head and are now on paper, you can um, design your day based on what's there and then create your schedule. Okay, this needs to happen before this. This deadline is before that one. And this is, you know, basically prioritizing. So the to-do list makes you a better at uh, creating priorities, observing what needs to happen and what order through the day. And then all together, that gives you clarity because once you put it in that in that space and you organize it in uh, uh, on a time, you know, frame that needs to happen, you're more clear about your day, what kind of day is going to be, what you're going to need to be doing in order for you to stay clear, energized, and, and well during that day. It just really sort of gives you a picture of what's going on. But what happens with these good things are turn around because of the tendency of high achievers, especially high achievers that are... Um, and in, in the space where a lot of people depend on them, and that's why they burn out, is high achievers have this tendency to have a to-do list that's too long, way too long, and that is the problem. The problem is not the list. The problem is that the list has become like way too long for any human being. Like, so now take a moment and think about your to-do list today, of today, whatever that is. Maybe you have it written down somewhere. Take a look at that and tell me, well, you can't tell me, but tell yourself, is it too long? Does it feel like you are actually going to accomplish all that today? Does it realistically fit the amount of time that you have in a day, which is not 24 hours because you need rest and eating and all of that. You're, you're a human being, you're not a machine. Does it reflect an intelligent decision that you actually think you're gonna make those things happen in one day? For most of us, that's not true. For most of us, it is way too long. And this results in all kinds of problems around your mindset, your emotions, and it becomes a trigger for the stress response, which is the basis of burning out. The more you trigger your stress response, and then you activate this, what I call chemical cascade with your physiology and also your brain function, the more but either the more you burn out if you're already there or the faster you end up there. So we don't want to uh, start this up by a simple thing like a to-do list. So what happens when your to-do list is too long? And I want you to understand this. So in a way, I want to convince you to stop doing this. Is The first thing, obviously, I obviously already say is stress, right? It just stresses you out. But the second one is as bad in its defeat. Because when your list is that long, you know you're not going to complete it. You know that you're not capable of doing all that. And so if that feeling of defeat feeds a limiting belief of I'm not good enough, which is one of the most uh, uh, common and damaging beliefs in the human mind. So that sense that I'm looking at this, there's no way I'm gonna do it, and then you feel defeat, it's actually really, really disarming. Also, if it's another limiting belief around high achievers that tend to burn out, which is there's not enough hours in the day. Like, let's just think about that. Is that even possible? The day has 24 hours. It was designed like so. 
whether it's enough or not, it's not up to us. It is what it is. What do you think that if the day was 27 hours, you would actually get more done? Um, that it's not an intelligent explanation of the situation. It's what we're doing with the time we have. It's not the time we have, but what we're doing with it. There is always enough hours of the day because every day has the exact same amount of hours. We all dealing with the same, right? So, but then when you can complete your tasks, on a given day, you start thinking that way. And so what does that take you? Into rushing and pushing other people, feeling overwhelmed, maybe even making mistakes because you're rushing, trying to complete all these things. Or what I used to feel was I felt like I was in a hamster wheel. Like that to-do list never finish. It was like an ongoing thing. And then I was always on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. It's, it, it robs you from your satisfaction, if that makes sense, because you're never done. <laughs> you're never done. There's always something else coming up. And that is not only frustrated, it just breaks your heart because I know you work hard and the thing that you want to do is not to feel that every time you do something, there's something else. Every time you do something, there's something else. Every time you, it's, it's just like, again, that's the hamster wheel that I don't want you to feel like. So how can you come out of this space? Well, I'm going to teach you uh, simple ways that you can do it, but I'm going to um, start with the basics. The very basics of this is that one of the reasons why your to-do list has become a source of so much stress, so much suffering and overwhelm and dissatisfaction is that you are not clear about what matters to you. In order for you to organize your life, you need to be very, very clear of the important things for you. And this includes both your career and your personal life because you cannot just focus on your career and neglect your personal life. You're not gonna be satisfied, you will burn out. And you obviously cannot just think about your personal life and abandon your career. That's not the point. But you had to get very clear and take this time, maybe sometime um, during this week to sit down and get clear about what are your values. Your to-do list has to be in alignment with those values, what, what really matters to you. And a good exercise to use for this is that when you are creating this list, ask yourself, how important is this to me and who am I doing this for? Because sometimes you're doing things that are, you really, really don't care to do and you're doing it because you're just going through the motions and because they, you know, someone else told you. So, you know, how important is this to me and who am I doing this for? It's a good way to start filtering and aligning with your values. So get clear what matters, both career and emotional or personal life. And then we use the formula of the four D's. So the four D's are do, delay, delegate and delete. So let's start with do. Well, obviously it's a to-do list, so there's things that need to be done. But this doing needs to be, this is very connected with what I just told you, this doing has to be important and relevant for you, and this doing cannot be more than three top things. And at this very moment, I'm gonna ask you to take a deep breath because you're probably thinking I'm crazy. How am I going to narrow this down to three things? I assure you it is possible. It is not gonna happen all at once, but when you have this huge to-do list, one way that you can start is by just highlighting the three most important things that are needed for that day and literally ignore everything else until those three things get done. So you don't feel like you are not, you know, paying attention to all the other things that need to get done. They're still there on your list, but you're only focusing on this. Eventually, yes, your to-do list will shrink. It will shrink. And it is such a strategic way of thinking, which us career people, especially if you want to be successful, need to do. You need to be very strategic about what needs to get done and narrow it in a way that it fits the amount of time that you actually have available. So do, 
no more than three important things. And here's where you probably are going to be even more shocked. Out of those three things, one better be about your personal life. Out of those three things, one better had to be either about your personal life, your health, your well-being. One really needs to be about you and not just your work. So if that feels like very hard, then, you know, make, make it four in the meantime. But you have to include within your to-do list you. You have to include yourself in your list. You have to be part of the list. What is the... What's the point of having a list where you're not even part of it? That's why it feels so impersonal and you feel like a robot or a machine. So do no more than three things. And out of those three things, one has to be about you. Now, I said delay was the second one. So that kind of it goes uh, hand in hand with do. Because the only way that you can get to three things is by learning how to delay certain things. There are things that don't need to happen today, and you better get clear about what that is. There are things that can wait to get done tomorrow, next week, even next month. And you are um, sometimes not asking yourself this question, what can wait? What can wait? What is the most important thing? What is the closest deadline? And what can wait? And then really understand the things that can't wait they can't wait because they are supposed to be done in another time, not today. Stop trying to jam things on the day that are not meant to be done today. So delaying is placing things on a timely manner within your calendar on the, ta on the times that they you know, belong. And that is how you're going to get to the core three um, to-do list that I mentioned to you. Okay, so delay, what can wait, what can, and give yourself permission. That's another one. Like we are so hard on ourselves. We just literally har self-harming with all of this uh, pressure. So give yourself permission to have things wait. So we went from do to delay. So now comes my favorite one. It is delegate. Okay, if you are going to really be successful in business or as an um, uh, entrepreneur, you better learn to delegate. And the problem with a lot of high achievers is that we are a bit of control freaks and we want to get our hands on everything. And that is doom. Actually, you're not going to be successful if you continue to do that. There will be a point where you're going to hit a wall. So start right now for your own career and for your relationships because no one likes a control freak. No one likes it. And you know what? You disempower the people around you and then you create a culture where they, guess what? They become complacent and lazy because they know you're not gonna let them do it anyways. So this is an exercise on letting go of control and trusting people in becoming a leader that develops others. And this involves also your children and your spouse, right? So what can you delegate? The question is, who can do this other than me? Or actually, who needs to be doing this? Because it's more than just who can. It's like someone should be doing this and that someone is not me. So who can be doing certain projects within your team or at home, who can be helping with the cooking? Who can be cleaning their, be cleaning their own um, uh, bathroom? Who can be helping with, you know, the, the garden? Who is this person? And then go ahead and delegate, empower other people and just give yourself the opportunity to communicate, express, and also to trust that others can do it too. And you're going to feel so good because in the process of developing others, you feel good for because you're helping them and you're obviously helping yourself because now you take something off your to-do list. So delegating. And then the last one is delete, like cross it out of your list forever. You don't need it there. You've been doing it out of habit. You've been doing it because it's just kind of like an automatic thing. It doesn't bring any value to you anymore. You don't even remember why are you doing this. And you're doing it and you truly are not enjoying it. You don't like it. 
it doesn't feel like you know it's important to you anymore then delete it and by delete it i mean it doesn't get done it's it's over it's obsolete it it, it doesn't have any place in your life anymore i mean we are evolving individuals you have to just take an assessment of what is it you're doing and what it's not longer in alignment with the kind of person that you're becoming and then you have to drop it you have to let it go. Sometimes you're not letting it go completely, but sometimes you're maybe upgrading it where it's more efficient. So you're doing something kind of manual that now technology can do for you. And what happens? You delete it out of your list because now there is a aspect of technology that can take care of that for you, right? Like for example, I tell <clears throat> a lot of my clients are so busy that the very um, trip to the groceries is a lot. So I'm like, wow. Who needs to go to the grocery store anymore? Just have your groceries delivered to your home. This is an example of a delete that is still happening, but it doesn't require your full involvement because a trip to the groceries when you had children, it's an ordeal. It can be a few hours, if no more. So deleting is addressing something and first asking, do I really want to do this? Does this even, like, let's also uh, um, consider things that you are involved in, responsibilities that you took like years to go that you no longer need to be doing and delete them, let them go. So do, delay, delegate and delete is how you, to-do list is gonna go from a stressor to a healthy, hopeful, and empowering tool in your life. And that is the road out of burnout. I hope that this was helpful for you. And actually, if you wanna learn a little bit more, please follow me at ommywellness.com. That's O-M, my wellness, all together for more tips. And the same for social media and Instagram and Facebook. And remember, Burnout, it's not necessary. You can succeed without breaking your body and your relationships in the process. And I wish nothing but that for you.